the theme of uh, International Women's Day this year is break the bias. Oh, um, like that. No, that's Ultraman. But yeah. That's <laughs> <the theme. laughs> Welcome to 12080, your community health platform. So, in conjunction of International Women's Day, we have a not so round table over here. So, we have our chief editor, Ms. Adeline Rizwani, our chief writer, and our defense secretary, <laughs> Adele, and our new junior writer from 12080. So, yeah, welcome everybody. Thank you. Thank you. So, how are you all feeling today? All right, it's good. Great. Great, 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 great. So, today we're going to have some. Uh, some light-hearted questions, controversial, but we, we won't dive into politics because uh, <laughs> we are a very young, nice company. We'll be nice to everybody. So I'll just jump into a question which uh, you know, we should ask all of us. So I'll go with the first one. How would you treat yourself? Spa. Spa. Yeah. I had 180 minute massage. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's, That's, like a, <laughs> That's like a movie length. <laughs> Specifically, yeah. 180. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 What about you, Vivani? Uh, cooking or either baking. Oh, yes. That's my favorite. Yeah, she's a good cook. I've been seeing. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> what about you? Well, mm, you're really much better. Ritual therapy. Oh. <laughs> and then end up with a nice cup of coffee. Coffee? Yeah. For me, it's usually <laughs> shopping spree. Shopping oh, spree? Shopping wow. spree. Ah, so we have two weeks. Yeah. Where's your favorite go to place? My favorite go to place type of home. Oh, oh. Wow, I was expecting you know uh, Zara and so forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Type four. Type four. Buying notebooks. Right. Okay. 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 Collect different types of notebooks, uh -huh. and I also love buying different patterns of socks. Okay, oh. that's me too. Yeah. So 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 either that or a mm -hmm. Harry Potter marathon. Harry Potter. Uh -huh. Anything okay. Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Yeah. Yes. So we're gonna go into something much more still flimsy, still casual, but. Let's ask ourselves, the woman you are today is definitely uh, uh, responsible because of somebody you aspire to be. A woman who encouraged you, who would you say? Um, am I limited to just one? Um, you can have a range, you can okay. even have the Justice League also. Okay, women, so no doubt, definitely my mom. She has uh, shaped me to who I am today and one of the lessons that she has always taught me that's always in my mind is to put myself in another person's shoes and that has taught me humil humility in many, many, many ways yes. in my life. And um, also, um, the other person is actually my ex-boss, my previous editor of a previous publication. Mm -hmm. She has definitely helped me a lot in the leader that I am today and as a writer as well. She has taught me so many things about the industry and about um, to lead with love. How would you say, like, maybe not somebody a role model, but mm -hmm. that one principle you follow from this woman leader or role model, you can say. And so one principle I always go in life is never be scared to speak out, even if it's wrong. Stand up for yourself, stand up for the people around you. If you see injustice happening, you do not be afraid to speak up. And the person who taught me this value is my mom. Wow. Yes, wow. she has always encouraged me to be, be, to be bolder, to be outspoken, to you know, sort of break the gender norm of being a girl. And a girl that would really seem to be prim and proper. Mm -hmm. But my mom has told me to go against that. And she, wow. yeah, wow. she literally encouraged me for being me. But as for role models, I don't have one in particular. I like to pick up things that I see which I like in the women around me. Right. So for example, in Adeline, I see, oh, you know, wow. like she said, oh, she's sick. a very good leader as in she sees, uh, she takes into account people's well-being and the task and she knows how each of them for his up. And same goes to Wani and Adeline as well. So I see the qualities in the women around me and I take what I like and I try to, you know, implement it in my life. Adel, what about you? Well, it's mom. Mom? Yeah. Wow, Patrick. Mom. mom, Patrick. Yeah. <laughs> it's mom. And of course, uh, I don't uh, actually have a, like, a role mm -hmm. model in a woman, but because I've been working for a long time, I just pick up the good ones in everybody, among my colleagues, my friends, and then take it from there. Mm -hmm. Always, you know, stay positive. 
Uh-huh. And happy, of course. Wow, happy. Yes, love, happy. Love, happy. happy. Yes, yes, yes. Bubbly, bubbly. Yes. Bubbly. Yes. Bubbly. Yes. Always there smiling. Yes. Yeah, we can say you are actually a role model in the office because you you radiate all the happiness oh, yeah. in the office. It's like a source of joy. Yes, exactly. Yes. 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 Exactly. It's a source of joy, definitely. If everybody is okay, you take care of everybody's health, actually. You're mm-hmm. sort of a mom, actually, mm-hmm. in the office. <laughs> we can all agree that mom has been our yes. superhero. Yes. Yes. yes, but as much as my mom is my superhero, I think for me, the person who has influenced me to go into this line, like study for English language, I would say my aunt. Wow. Mm-hmm. Because when I was young, she would make me and my cousin sit with a book, a story book, and she'll make us read it out loud. Mm-hmm. Oh. So she'll, she'll make sure that our pronunciation is right. So that is what have brought me here today. I think everyone is a role model. It's just how you pick which side you want to see and how you want to include it in your life. Yes. Right. True. Correct. True. Yeah, yeah. That's totally have to agree. So. Wow, it's interesting. We have like you know a set of different point of view, but and then we can say that we have somebody, a woman leader behind us. Now this is a, the controversial part. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so who pays on the first date? Ooh. Oh. That's a nice question. Um, I want it to be answered. <laughs> based on my experience, yeah, yeah. we do not carry out. The, the stereotype where only men should play on the first date. So when oh. me and my fiance went on the first date, I still remember it was him eating roti chara and me eating dosa. Oh, that's cool. And um, I insisted on paying half of the bill. Mm. Wow. And he didn't like he didn't like say no. Oh, that's no, cool. he has to pay. Where to find like, these guys all? Where are you all? <laughs> <laughs> That's you asked the important question. <laughs> yeah. So I really like how he didn't insist. No, no, no. I need to pay. I yeah, need yeah. to pay. Mm-hmm. So I, 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 like the thing. So even until now, wow. Okay. We are just like, kila you pay, or okay, kila I pay. Oh, that's <laughs> yeah. nice. That's nice. Okay, guys, please. <laughs> please don't oh, show the nothingness. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, tell him, come, let's hear your story. Who paid oh, for the first? Yours is a love marriage, a beautiful love story. So come on, who paid first? How many years of marriage? How many years? Yes, how many years? How many years of romance? No, 40 over. Wow, wow. wow. Four decades of love story. Mm-hmm. Come on, who paid for the dinner? I want to know this part. Okay, uh, you know, in, in the past, guys will always pay on the, especially the first date. Maybe oh. at that time it's a privilege, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Ah. Yeah. But uh, even to, to nowadays, I think guys paying on the first date is uh, well outdated. I think it's acceptable now to go Dutch. Dutch, yes, yeah. yes, another yes. term. Yeah, we can use that. Go yes. Dutch. Yeah, they go yes. Dutch. Right? So this question is a definitely a must to ask you. As being a successful woman, you're a chief editor, a mom, a beautiful wife, a daughter. So how do you balance that? To tell you the truth, uh, I don't really believe in a balance oh. in the sense that I think it's almost impossible to juggle yes. and uh, if you focus on the balance you just find yourself juggling in having to achieve that every day mm. so instead I think it's more prioritizing mm. Priority. Yes. yeah it's more prioritizing and knowing your boundaries as well that way you'll find more peace and you will experience a better balance right yeah so like for me it would be like you know I have to of course motherhood and mm. work and I know like those are the important stuff and where are my limits? Like if I'm tired, um, you know I should listen to my body I know that okay it's time to stop, it's time to hit the bed. Where do you find you time? Your me time? My me time? Mm. Mm. Actually for me right, during that 24 hours every, every second, every minute is a me time. It's just how you look at it. So when you're working, you're working for yourself that can also consider as a me time. Wow. But it depends how you look at it. Are you like frustrated with your job? Do you feel burnt out? If yes, then you don't. But with me, I'm happy with my job. Wow. I like writing. Wow, okay. Everybody knows that, huh? <laughs> Love what you do. That is yes. your me time. Yeah. So right now, my sister and I, we are the main breadwinners of the family. Mm-hmm. Due to the pandemics and challenges, we have to step up and, you know, take the breadwinner position for the family. So 
finding balance now is even more so difficult because back when my dad was working I had all the luxury you know, I could just like go out and do whatever I want I didn't feel the pressure that much but since the pandemic and its repercussions um, we sort of like need to step up so with that comes with its own set of challenges for example me time now for me is a bit less because I'm always on the go of trying to figure out okay how to make ends meet how to do things how to do that how to settle you know paperwork, um, financial stuff at home, so more to grown-up stuff, I would say. So mainly, and I also believe I really need me time, so what I do is, my Saturday Sundays are purely dedicated for me. Monday to Friday, I'll do whatever necessary, be it work, be it, um, you know, financial planning and whatever, Monday to Friday. Saturday and Sunday, I just say, don't disturb me, phone silent, no, <laughs> phone and silent mode. Um, yeah, I just watch Harry Potter movies or I read uh, fan fictions. I read storybooks, I watch movies, binge watch Netflix. Right. It's more to like, I self-isolate yeah. on the weekends again. Okay, that's good, that's good. Just to unwind. To that's, yeah. yeah, that's nice. Being a woman, or being a leading woman, definitely we all have challenges, especially career-wise. One that is unequal pay. Sometimes priority is given to the other gender than your gender. So, what is your take on it? I think in this day and age, the whole gender line is blurred already. Women can do stuff that um, men only used to do, mm -hmm. and men can do stuff that women, like a mainly a women dominant kind of feel. Right. Yeah, so it's all inter interlinked already, and but there's not so much of like um, the stereotype is not as strong as it yes. used to be. Right. Yeah, that's in my opinion. I think Which, women and men can actually compete with each other. Yeah. yeah. In terms of yeah. you need mental, then it's I think there don't need to be a barrier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In terms of labor, yeah, yeah. I would use in that way because there's a lot of things that need revamping. My point of view, yes. you know, to break the whole barrier. Yeah. If that's I was the, saying this. That's the theme of our International Women's Day this year is break the bias. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, so like that, no, that's all for men. But yeah. <laughs> Ah, yes, yes, Korea have never faced much of a gender stereotype, gender stereotypes, etc. But in terms of culture or I'm not sure societal norm, I guess in the Asian context, right now as I'm aging, 26 years old, moving right. forward in life, is where questions such as marriage relationships is coming into Correct. picture. Yeah. So people around me, this may be anyone, relatives, friends, anybody who think they care for me but I don't know but it's not coming in the right way what they mean is um, because I'm outspoken and you know I like to question things and I am a bit dominant and more up to take leadership roles they tell me to tone it down oh. so I would appeal more to men meaning um, uh -huh. it would be easier to get a boyfriend basically or it would be easier to get a husband uh -huh. and but how do you feel in all of this like uh they're asking you to tone down. Yeah, my first thing is I don't need a man. Okay. <laughs> that's my. That's my. Yes. Uh, I'm a rock chick. <laughs> yeah, my first thought is first I am my own person. Yes, I don't need true. a man to like okay. complete me. Correct. I want to be happy with my own self first. Okay. Secondly, is um, you know, a person if they're gonna be your life partner, they mm. should accept you for who you are. Yes. You should not change yourself. Yes. Right. I completely agree. Good. Change yourself, down yourself down, or dim yourself down. You know, lower down your potential, just so they will be happy with you. I do not yeah. see in a long picture that's not sustainable, right? Second thing I'm going through is um, there are people who's telling me not to pursue higher studies. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Not a lot, but one or two. They say do not go and study masters. Do not pursue higher studies. Then it's going to be difficult to find a husband for you. Oh, huh? I didn't know. This is this barrier. I didn't know. Huh? Yeah. So, so let me just ask this, this same thing, let me just channel this to Wani. So is it okay if your partner is uh, less uh, qualified than you in education? Yes, definitely. Okay? It's not an issue. For instance, he's only in um, high school level, he graduated. He didn't yeah. do his quaternary studies, tertiary and all. Mm -hmm. Is that fine with you? I think for me personally, I'm fine with it. It's about the knowledge you've gained from your working experience and whether you're able to on with your life, with your job, right. independently, without depending on others. You don't have to 
to be well educated in order to move on. As long as they have that experience, as long as they are willing to do what it takes to move forward, then I think that's alright. Because not many people have that privilege to go for a higher education. Right. What about you, Miss Adeline? What if you are making a better uh, payslip than your your partner? How would your partner feel, or how would you feel personally? He would be very happy. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, More too, so. <laughs> for the household. But that school, you know, the superior, inferior complex yes. that will play along. Maybe uh, you, you won't know, you know your partner, your husband is feeling it, but you would feel it also like, you know, there's some kind of vibe will be changing. Because uh, to be honest, male have this whole instinct of, you know, the, it's masculinity. It's masculinity. Yeah. 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 It's built in, okay? Don't blame us. It's built in. <laughs> Since <laughs> Arab and Eve time, we built in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's such. Yeah. Such, and then it's also it's not as a pressure. How would you feel if you're making more? Okay, personally, um, at first of all, first probably the first few hours or days, I'll probably feel like okay, will he be okay with that? Mm -hmm. But when I think it through, and that's only because of society's expectations yes, and yes. what has been said. But when I think it through, and I know that my husband will be okay with it, yeah, he'll definitely be okay with it, and more than happy for me. Oh, that's that's yeah, good, yeah, yeah. Like uh, I think it's more than because when you have that bond and relationship, it goes beyond what society thinks of you. At the end of the day, what makes you happy as a household and in your marriage mm -hmm. is that respect that you have for each other. Yes. It's not so much of like you know what other people think of me. Ego. Yeah, stuff yes, like that. Ego. I do have something else to add also yeah. for gender and. Yeah. Stereotypes about being a mom, like parents. Yes, mom. Yes, we yeah. have to touch that. So, so, that's yeah. Yeah. so that's so like, one you can take note of. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sure Adeline might be able, will yes. be able to yes. share. So I mean Adele, sorry, Adele. she'll be able to share that. Um, you know, as a as a woman, as a mom, you're expected to do everything. Correct. You yes. know, twenty four hours a day, A to Z, baby, baby feed, baby cook, um, you know, make baby nap, everything, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Be, yeah, you don't think so you're paid for this. Sorry? They're not paid for this. Oh yeah, not being paid for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but then the joy and happiness is there. Yes. Oh, okay, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, you know, when you become a parent, it's yeah. not just um, the woman's role, right? Correct. And that is yes, an equal parent, role yeah. and, and it should be co-parenting in that sense. But in society, it's like, you know, like for example, even in my household, like when my husband helps out, he is really hands-on and he helps out a lot. And then, you know, family members go like, oh, he's really good, uh. he helps a lot, yeah. you know, you, you'd have no problems. And I'm like, he's the dad, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, it's just the like, oh, yeah. you didn't expect him to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 There's actually yeah. an extra praise if the dad does something. Uh, yeah, actually yes. his role is the first video. Yeah, yeah. Right. if the dad goes extra, that one inch, not my inch. Correct. He's the best dad ever, he gets an award. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, you would see him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The mom has been doing it for like, months, forever. Yeah. And yeah. like expected Yes, 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 yeah. So, so really, I mean, this kind of things that society expects, you know, even like to cook, you know, if I were to not cook for my child, for example, and buy and, and get takeout for my child, and then my husband does it. It's like my husband's the cool dad, and I'm like the lazy yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's all the society's perceptions of yeah. things, mm -hmm. and there's really so many around this world. But I realized that as in as a new mom as well, it's so important to shut all this out and see what's important for you at the end of the day. Because there's really so much of stereotypes out there, mm -hmm. and it's coming from your own family members, yes. those that are yeah. close to you. Yes. You know, they are well-meaning people, but at the end of the day, you're like. Mm, are you really meaning well about this? <laughs> <laughs> it's, not, it's not showing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so there's even washing the dishes, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Even washing the dishes, you know. My my grand when we were getting married, my grandma would be like, um, hey, take his plate, take his plate, you know, bring it to the mm -hmm. sink, yes. wash it for him. Uh, <laughs> uh, but he ate from that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This yeah. this small yeah. things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. Everyone nodding here. Yeah, and this, uh, it's in brown families as well. So, right? so, so you know, women are sort of the stand and serve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And then they eat they eat. Yes. I would say I, I face this because uh, yes, even our office I was uh, washing the dishes and people were like you're washing no 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 you shouldn't wash the guy shouldn't wash I'm like oh. <laughs> I'm not exposing the person. <laughs> 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 
Yeah. So, so I, I, I was surprised. Isn't this a norm thing? I washed dishes <laughs> in my house. My mom, yeah. I mean, mom trained us to dry clothes, wash, uh, vacuum, yeah. etc., etc. Yeah. Because uh, she wants to live like a queen. I mean, she, she, <laughs> she can. She can. She's, yeah. genius. She's programming. That's why my sister actually relaxes us in the house. <laughs> So my brother and I, we do the chores, mm. throw the rubbish, etc, etc. But I felt normal, but when I was doing this chores here, the same thing, speaking up rubbish and disposing, it felt very new, I felt like an alien. <laughs> oh. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, but you're right. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I have to break that, like, why when a dad does it, it's an award, and when a woman, mother does it, it's a, um, you know, it's a daily task. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Zedlin? How would you challenge this? You see, in, in the old days, Mm. Mom's generation. Guys are not allowed in the kitchen. Oh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sure you know, but yes. Guys are like, no, shoot sh- sh- them out. It's like women's yeah. department. No yes. guys are allowed. But today is different. Yeah. Yeah. It's different. It's all shared chores. In fact, I think my husband does more on the dust, domestic scene than myself. <laughs> yeah, how, how is it like now your husband is a house husband uh-uh. and vice versa? Now you are the working person. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. How, how is it now in the household? Well, we still uh, mm. share chores, you know. Uh-huh. Maybe if we can, he'll be doing lunch and he's good at it, alright? Uh-huh. And then I will do dinner. So oh, that's nice. Okay. Yeah. And then washing up, if my children comes back, uh, after eating, we just leave the table. They they, they will do the washing. Ah, mm-hmm. you know, okay. They will do the washing. It's gonna be a, a shared chores, yeah. uh, you know. Yeah. You should not, like, yeah. uh, guys should not do yes. the washing. Guys, you know. In fact, guys are some of the very good cooks. So health is very important. Okay, it's health because you know, especially in our region, health is not addressed. It's well worse in other other regions. According to the Center for Disease Control that uh, there is actually a general idea that women who are all the age of 45 and above have the tendency to get breast cancer. But not many know that actually younger people can, are prone to have, especially now we are evolving a lot of new diseases, this and that comes here. So they always advise to always have do a self-check, a self-breast examination. So how often do you do it? Not often at all, to tell you the truth. Only when I remember. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you say it's, man- it's mandatory, right, to you? Yeah, to me, honestly, it's really, really important. Uh, you know, only I will know how it looks like, how it feels like, if there's any changes. And I should be doing it every month. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, um, Maybe we can say that, uh, we can assume the reason you're not doing this is because you think it's fine. Yes. yes. Because yes. how it. How you feel, you feel it's fine, that's why you're not doing it? Is it because of yes, that? Yes, I feel fine, I think it's fine, you know, and of course, still below the age of 45. That's, so, yes, that's one so thing. So the risk is, I mean, it's always understood as that, as you have mentioned. Yes. So yeah, it, it's kind of like built in me, like still young, so, you know, I can still enjoy life in that sense. And I think partly also is the fear of the unknown. Mm. Correct. Yeah, so like, you know, um, I think that's in a lot of people also, which hinders us from maybe getting regular medical checkups, you know, um, to understand your body well. Yes. Um, yeah, it's the fear of the unknown. I think that is something that we really need to tackle and address. Okay. Yeah, right. even though we, we speak about it in 1280 as well, mm-hmm. to, to, to overcome that. But personally, honestly, I still do experience that fear. Right. But yeah, one awareness. Is the awareness part. But okay, maybe one I'll ask you this. Uh, people are not doing this because maybe they're not sure how to do it. Mm-hmm. Maybe it could be that. Could you, I mean, could you share on that? Yeah, so, I think chances are high mm-hmm. for people not being aware on how to do this because, as um, social media posting, even health profiles, right? They do add about how to do self checks and all, but I think not as often as it should be. And sometimes, um, not visiting your doctor like at a particularly certain age, and as you come to age, you know. You need to go and consult a doctor or you need to talk to a professional on what you need to do. And as a woman ourselves, what, what are the health things that we need to take note of? So I think chances of it being out there isn't much. Mm-hmm. But we at 120, we do every now and then do talk and share yes. details about it. And we've also written articles about breast self-examination. And I think uh, people 
our readers and everyone can easily go and read up the audit and they can perform it on themselves easily. Mm -hmm. And if ever they feel like there's a lump, there's, a, there's not a lump, they're mm -hmm. not sure, just directly go and talk to a doctor. Yeah, right. never assume that right. it's just something yes. that will go away. Yes. 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 Yeah. It might not. A lot of things with I've seen many women is or at least the women around me, they they tend to think it will go away before actually going to a health yes. professional. Yeah. Usually, by the time they go, it's already like critical. Stage. Yes. Yeah. Or they try to self medicate. Yeah. By yeah. you know trying whatever or asking uh, everybody else around them. Correct. Except the doctor. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Maybe yeah. because we have the fear of coughing up that <laughs> amount to go pay that uh, the consultation. Yeah. 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 And I think it's also like um, in their comfort zone, you know, like in terms of like breast self examination, um, it's probably something got to do with society as well. In terms of like, will you like touching if it thinks if they think of it as touching itself, but it's actually knowing your health and how your body looks like. Mm -hmm. So women, um, I feel like many of them perhaps might not even look in the mirror and just really look at every bit of their body when they should really appreciate it and yes. and you know respect who they are and mm -hmm. what um, God have, has blessed us with. Mm -hmm. But then a lot of us will be like, oh I don't I don't want to see my bits or you know, those mm -hmm. kind of stuff, you know, in the mirror, like like Correct. because you know you really have to do that by self examination, yes. right? So I think I'm um, standing in front of the mirror mm -hmm. after showering, just looking at yourself, admiring and understanding your body yes, is actually something that yeah. even mm -hmm. both men and female have to yes, do it. But women in general should just to know that they're on the same side. Right. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Maybe you can ask this to you, Miss Adeline. You're very fit. I see you every time in the office. Flying from here to there, you're upstairs, downstairs, <laughs> downstairs, upstairs. What's your secret? No, because like you all say, you only yourself knows your body. Yes. Your body, if you're not well, your body will give you sign, yes. signs of you know. Important to do an annual health screening program. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know that, but I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about the uh, breast self examination of the breast, I think it's important, like you know. But I do it only on and off. When I'm actually in the shower, mm -hmm. I don't do it every time. I think that's the yes. best yes, time yes. where yes. we are being ourselves in our own place. Yes. Like. Yes. I always remember, you know, they have been, uh, education on this about how to uh, check your breast, you yeah. know, mm -hmm. like, divide, you know, into and then just fill mm -hmm. it. Uh, yeah, yes. yeah, that's right. Okay, so this is going to be an open question. Burnouts, not the ones with the cars, but. <laughs> Me too, feel burnout. Honestly, I am na navigating through one right now. Ooh. Yeah. Um, I didn't think I would be burned out. And I didn't, honestly, it didn't come. It, the thing about burnout is that it's not gradual. You know, you, you go about your everyday life like a, it's like a routine already, right, most of the time. And then one day you just feel like you've lost interest in stuff. You know, you, you just. Nothing seems to be interesting anymore. It, it's just like you're just going about feeling really empty. And um, yeah, it took a, a bit of time for me to realize that I was actually burned out. Alright, mm -hmm. so yeah. that's a burnout to you when there is, uh, you're doing, doing something on repetitive, that's a burnout? Um, not only on repetitive, but I think when you start feeling empty. Empty? Yeah, yeah. This yeah. is losing a sense of purpose and it's more like, um, interest. yes, the lack of interest. So like, I really enjoy my job and I really enjoy what I do. But at one point I was like, why am I even doing this? You know, mm -hmm. that uh. kind of thing. And, um, and I know, the thing is, thankfully I know myself good enough to know that this is not right and right. something needs to be done. First of all, it's important to acknowledge it. Like to actually address, and, I mean first yes, acknowledge and to tell yourself, okay, I am actually experiencing this, now what should I do? And then you have to look around you and your surroundings. That I mean personally, that's what my experience is, to look around you and think, okay, what's going to help you navigate through it? You know, what do you need to put a stop to or what do you need to focus on? So for me personally, what has helped me through, of course, the spiritual side of it as well, that has given me peace to know that there's someone greater out there that's in control. So, like how what Ms. Adeline said here, um, there is this always this, this lacking of this emptiness, correct me yes. if I'm wrong. Yes. It's like nothing to drive you further. 
when your take of burnout what is burnout to you burnout for me actually i faced due to the pandemic i have faced burnout especially um it's more happening for me right now uh, in a sense that you know for me to feel alive and have a purpose in life i thrive on human interaction mm-hmm. uh, because i'm extrovert a bit so i thrive wow. on human interaction i love going out seeing new things talking to people making connections doing interesting things while things so when the pandemic came all of that is just like got taken away so i felt like flying suddenly fell Whoa. you know because what is something i thrive on is gone so when i don't have interaction and i have to keep looking at the same walls repetitive tasks uh, it the burnout came in a sense that i sort of lost purpose because i don't talk to people outside i do not have interaction to keep me going to keep me motivated so i knew i was facing burnout actually i knew it but uh, the mistake i made was thinking it would go away yeah uh, not addressing it properly yeah I do I did address it in a sense that it will go away. Mm. No, I acknowledge that it's there, but I have the sense that you know it will go away. I don't have to do anything about it. Just leave it be, push it under the rug, you know. Uh-huh. So it ended up sort of blindsiding me in a sense one day I just like I don't know what happened. I think it's just like piling up and piling up, piling up. One day it's just I just said and I was like 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 you said, what am I doing with my life? Why am I going? Why am I doing this? What am I put here in this? The whole existential crisis uh-huh. just begins and the floodgate opens. Oh gosh. And then, yeah, then they start to opening the bodies and I'm okay. <laughs> 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 I get to, of course I follow the SOP, of course I follow yeah. the SOP and yeah. stuff. But for me, I realize I need interaction. I need mm-hmm. colors in life. I need variations. I cannot stay. Trap and all that. Right. Oh, okay. Confined. Okay. Yes. So we're not burnout now, right? Um, gone lah. But oh. I know how to deal with it already. <laughs> Meaning, oh, okay. I take more time out for myself. I go out. I uh, spend time with friends. I kind of thing lah. Right. Oh, okay. Good Is time. it the same for you, Miss Edmund? Adam? I don't actually oh. experience burnout. Wow, you're lucky. Yeah. Wonderful. I just take uh, each day as it comes, mm-hmm. and then thank God that I'm. Alive, <laughs> you know. Right, yeah. that's interesting. Maybe we should follow that. Yes. Then. It's a new day, new slate. Yeah. yeah. Don't worry about tomorrow, right? Yeah. yeah. Keep yeah. in the moment. Mm. Uh, If you worry, what's the point of uh, getting worried? Mm. You know, there's no point in, in uh, like you know stress yourself out. Just treat it as a normal day. Right. To be in that way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Always stay positive. Mm-hmm. I, I I pray each time I you know I wake up in the morning. Mm-hmm. I just say a very short prayer. Oh, that's mm-hmm. lovely. Yeah, I say thank God, you know that uh-huh. I'm alive. You know, you know. women shower longer than men. Yes, or no? <laughs> yes. No, no, not no. when you become a mom. My husband takes long shower. Oh, I don't. <laughs> oh, that's new. That's new. In my personal experience. No, my husband showers like she thinks about half an hour in the bathroom, and I think, wow. yeah, and I think like ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying with him, and then okay, because I feel that I'm clean, I'm clean yeah. already. Why, why, why want to take time to worry? Like you know, yeah. not these ladies. It's not we are clean good enough. <laughs> I had to clarify something. Ah, oh, yes. Before becoming a mom. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's my face right now. <laughs> I, yeah. yeah. I think so, so. I used to like have a whole shelf of like beauty products. Products. Yeah. Oh. Hair mask, body mask, uh, conditioner, all sorts of hair oil. Do you do this for yourself or to impress? Okay, so at the initial stage, of course, to impress. Yes. <laughs> you know, and then when I got married, I found that it's a form of self care that I really enjoy. Correct. Right? So All right. it was for myself. Interesting. Yeah. So there is like two phases to it. Yeah. It's oh, okay. Life. What about you, Moni? Was it that uh, like you know? No, for me, it was more of pampering myself. Mm. I didn't. I honestly, I didn't do anything much to impress anyone. Even this far, but like <laughs> <laughs> you know, just standing under the sh- hot shower. Just standing in the blank wall and then uh, relaxing—it's cool. a very nice feeling. Mm. Yes. 
Yeah. So, but at yeah. times when we are rushing late and we know about it, yes, then that's when like, ah. we speed up. <laughs> speed up. So there is a speed up mode for you. There is. Yeah. Definitely. Doesn't yeah. happen in my household. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Uh, uh, I use yeah. when I was younger, high school days, I used to shower for more than an hour. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I mean like even back when I was in uni also, I just take my time. Does it include uh. like face face routine? Sometimes. Like yeah. Wow. Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. Uh, uh. So what do you okay, curious? Yes. Like one hour do you just let the sh the, the water <laughs> run and just enjoy it? Um, what I do is I play music. So I wow. put my phone uh. right outside the bathroom door. It's like a I concert then. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh. And I just have like my own personal concert. Oh. Have fun putting shampoo, dance, sing out loud. The only things I can sing. Mm. <laughs> it's like your little your your me time corner. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And I wear makeup because I love playing with colours. I right. love wearing daring colour lipsticks. <coughs> um yes. if you were to see me somewhere outside out of office in malls, you probably wouldn't recognize me. <laughs> 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 because I like to uh, like heavy eyeliner. Wow. Not like heavy, heavy, but like I a quite big bold eyeliner and weird lipstick colors. I like to experiment how weird colors. <laughs> mm, um, I mix and match lipstick color. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow. Okay. Uh, thing and I like to do a lot of uh, makeup on people and makeup on oh, myself. Okay, that's yes. nice. okay. So for me, it's more like an art form. I am mm -hmm. a creative person, so I see the human face. I'm at that point of life that the human face is a canvas for me. I'm so bored wow. of like yeah. drawing on paper. Yeah. So for me, makeup is a form of um, creative outlet. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. yeah. It's so a creative outlet. As for skincare, I do it because my mom yells at me la, to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think but yeah, do you think like makeup is like society's expectations? Yeah, yeah. Actually I was going to this. Yeah, I won't lie. Actually, um people sort of expect you to wear blush and eyeshadow and stuff like that. Yeah. 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 Lipsticks on, on eyeliner, right. yeah. okay. mascara, right. something like that. Yeah. So I, I feel like memang, it's undeniable there yes. is perception that women need to look a certain way to look presentable. If a women don't wear makeup or don't wear anything and they just come to office, I think they'll be labeled as sloppy, mm -hmm. messy, doesn't look clean. Uh, you know. I would agree to this to some extent. Yes, uh, that's your opinion. Yeah. As the opposite sex uh, here, <laughs> the only opposite sex here. <laughs> Well, I, I believe it's not about the makeup about a woman, it's how she carries herself mm -hmm. from grooming to tying the hair mm -hmm. and the outfit also depends on where you are. I believe in that you carry yourself, it's not about the size of your body or your features. Yeah. If you have that effort to groom yourself, carry yourself, uh, I believe that's very attractive because you put that effort to appreciate yourself. First, is it like first impression matter? Yes, I. You cannot follow the heart, my point of view. You don't know what's inside the heart. Mm -hmm. You have to see what's outside first, then only you can. Once you go inside, then you realize how disgusting inside that's something else. But, <laughs> <laughs> but first impression is always good. How they carry somebody, how the way they talk. Mm -hmm. And then only you get to engage if you for this is stereotype, somebody with um, tattoos on the face everywhere, yeah. piercings. Yeah. They are the nicest people, yeah. but socially you just don't want to go and talk to them because yeah. you look scary. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. see that stereotype. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's ask about that. Now you are having tattoos and all. How do people actually approach you? They are like like very distant friends, parents. Mm -hmm. Like, oh my God, we have tattoo. What yeah. is what's the meaning of the tattoo? Where would you get a tattoo? Correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. So um, I would just say, I love it. Ah, exactly. And then they like, ah, oh, okay. But they still don't understand, <laughs> right? <laughs> ah. so, um, do you think like getting tattoos is one way to mask your insecurities? Because you say like the shark mm -hmm. is uh, like that dominant, that, that strong mm -hmm. thing. So do you think that mm -hmm. like getting a tattoo or more is a way of masking your insecurities? Yes, definitely. Because um, mm -hmm. when I was young, I was very insecure about myself. Mm -hmm. Extremely insecure. And I couldn't find a way to make people proud or even be proud of myself. 
So I always get very happy and excited and I'm very, I feel very peaceful mm -hmm. whenever I see anything about shark. And it makes me feel, I always have this thought, I can be like that. Mm. Maybe, maybe previous generation. <laughs> I you know, I don't know why. I just have this special bonding attraction towards shark. Maybe it's the attributes of the shark. Yeah. Like, Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the, yeah. What about you, Santi? Body image. Yes, body image. Yeah. To be honest, I do struggle with body image okay. really because um, I've gone through a period in life where I was. 70 kilos okay. like I literally used to be the big size kid and then I realized there's a difference on how people accept you mm -hmm. when you are fat and how people accept and celebrate you when you're thin mm -hmm. so I've experienced both ends of the spectrum so when I was fat I always get called um, things like you know oh my god you're so fat you need to lose weight look at this dress it looks so ugly on you you can see your stomach your arm is not nice literally people would just I don't know how people feel so rightful to even comment that on mm. another individual, you know, it's yeah. so normalized in our society. Yeah. People just will say it and it even hurts even more when it's the people close to you. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. They just feel, have the audacity to do that. And then um, I, went to, I went to university and in university as we walk a lot. We mm -hmm. have to rely on walking is our main mode. So with walking and a lot of uh, constant movement, I lost a dramatic amount of weight. I went down to 50, 50 kilos. Wow. 50, 51 kilos. I was thinner, right? Back then people celebrated me. Oh my god, you're, you lose weight. Uh -huh. how, how much weight did you lose? How did you lose weight? You look amazing. Yes. Uh, teach me how did you lose yeah, weight. Yeah, what's your secret? What are you doing? Yeah, oh my god, you're really so beautiful. The dress fits you so nicely. Like, it, and even my mom was like, oh my god, you look so nice. And, and then people would be asking, what's your secret? I was like, uh, <laughs> this is the best. go broke, starve yourself, <laughs> and I feel like gay, um, survive on five, four to five hours of sleep. Essentially, that's really mm -hmm. good, right? And now, I've put on more weight mm -hmm. compared to my uni days. So now, the whole cycle has started again. I don't care if I'm thin or fat, honestly. Mm -hmm. yeah. It seems that the people around me came off at me. Yeah. And look, I am thin or fat. Yeah. And then what? One person is like, hey, make sure you lose weight, then only can find husband for you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. But then I got something to contradict from here. Uh, being thin or fat is something else, but health is very important. Yeah. Being fit. You can be fat and be happy, but your health, you don't know what's happening inside. Yeah. Your whole heart is having lumps of fats actually yeah. on top. Yeah. One more pump and you're yes. off away. Yeah. So that's one more thing you have to take concern. Being uh, fat or thin, you can be very happy with that yeah. and comfortable, but being healthy, I'm not talking about size wise. Mm -hmm. You can also be in big size or small size, but if you're not healthy, like you don't have that exercise, that normal exercise to strengthen yourself, you're gone. You don't know what's happening. Yes. But I would say I'm comparatively to my university, even though I was slim and everybody was celebrating me for it. I think comparatively I'm way more healthier now mm -hmm. yeah. because I'm getting three meals a day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm getting at least seven or eight hours of sleep. Yes. Um food is the best medicine. Yeah. Say. So I'm getting <laughs> All those things, and this is how I look now. And I think yeah. I don't know; it's normal, you know. Yeah. Compared to uni, where people are waiting me for hours, literally not good. I need energy drinks to survive. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh dear, sugar, sugar, sugar. <laughs> I'm sorry, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's like that. So people are celebrating the wrong thing, celebrating people for the wrong things. Correct. Yeah. That is our not so round table talk with the woman of 12080. So let's have a small closing. Start with you, Miss Edley. Okay. To sure. the woman out there. What do you like to say? Okay. To the women out there, um simple love yourself. Yeah, just shush any other comments that's uh -huh. coming from to you externally, really just listen to yourself and love yourself. Right. Interesting. Just love yourself. Funny? Just as simple as Edley um be bold, be brave, be you. Eat what you want, do what you want. <laughs> Just respect yourself and people will eventually respect you. Right, true. Okay. Right. What about you? Me? Yeah, to the woman out there. So to all the women out there, um, first thing, love yourself. Second thing is um, treat yourself better first. When you treat mm -hmm. yourself better, then only other people follows, you know. You have to love yep. yourself first.
yeah. then expect things from other people. Uh, so it all starts from you. Yes, love yourself first and uh, stay healthy and happy to all the women out there. Okay. To all the women out there, happy International Women's Day. Happy International Women's Day, Happy International Women's Day. Till next time, do like, share, and subscribe. Thank you. Bye.